So Bianca, can you fill us in on the progress with uh, Plant a Pledge so far? We launched the campaign at Rio Plus 20 uh, this year and so far the pledges have exceeded our wildest expectation. We have 80 million hectares of land pledged, 15 by the United States government, two by the government of Rwanda and one by the Mata Atlantica of Brazil. And uh, if everything um, works according to plans, perhaps we will be making some new pledges uh, next Thursday when we have our press conference. Can you give us a little bit more detail on which countries might be joining at this stage? Well, so far we had some, um, some interest expressed uh, uh, by India, who says that they are considering to make a pledge for 10 million uh, hectares, and that would be wonderful if they can forward. And there are some countries in Central America that are thinking about it and that may be willing to make those pledges soon. And uh, so um, we are very, um, very hopeful that some of those will materialize, you know, perhaps here in, um, in Doha. Plant a Pledge is obviously about reforestation and restoring natural landscapes. What meaning does it have for people and communities and their rights as well? The, the reason why I was so... Um, taken by uh, and convinced uh, to become ambassador for IUCN Plant a Pledge campaign was because um, of the fact that peoples and communities are at the heart of this, of this uh, initiative uh, and therefore um, this is not just simply about planting trees but this is about you know a mosaic of, 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 of different things that are done, uh, which include um, restoring water sources and agriculture, but which will bring benefit to people. It could bring up to $80 um, billion dollars a year. That's a very large to their economies. And this is not, you know, like some of the initiative that is simply about um, forestation and which doesn't take into account uh, the lives of the communities around this but but it has communities and people at the heart of this uh, initiative. And what are you hoping to hear from the ministers uh, who will be arriving in Doha uh, for the rest of the climate talks this week? What kind of progress would you like to see from them on the negotiations? Well. I think that what we're all expecting them to say is that there will be no gap between the ending or the expiration of the Kyoto Protocol, the first period, and the beginning of the second period, which should begin really on the 1st of January 2013, and for eight years, not only four. Um, I think that most people who are here and people who are really well informed realize that um, had to wait until 2015 uh, for all of them to announce that they have agreed to come on board and to make it only really uh, be able to be implemented in 2020 may be too late. What is so important is what I spoke about today is the, um, uh, the report that was commissioned by the World Bank from the Potsdam Institute uh, that talks about the looming threat of a four degree centigrade uh, of increase um, by, some say, by the end of the century. Some others will say it may well be that it's a lot earlier. The truth is that uh, according to a well-renowned scientist from the NASA Institute, uh, James Hansen, he says that in order to stay under two degrees centigrade, we need to, we can go beyond 350 parts per million and we today are at 394. Therefore, it is important that that gap between what is being claimed, that is being negotiated, and what uh, the science requires uh, needs to, you know, needs to come to terms with the realities and with the facts and with the science, and that we need for, for leaders and politicians and world leaders who will come here to really understand what the science require in order to keep us under two degree uh, increase. 
and and the 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 changes that anything beyond two degrees will bring to the world in terms of catastrophic climate change is is very very disturbing and very worrisome to all of us and uh, so let's hope that this will not be remembered as the cup with the gaps that couldn't really come to terms with the science. Now that uh, President Obama has been re-elected and the United States has sadly been hit by Hurricane Sandy, do you think there's anything additional that we can expect uh, from the United States in terms of ambition on emissions reductions uh, and perhaps more finance uh, to help poorer countries cope with climate change? Sadly, I feel that President Obama will not be able to sign on now to the Kyoto Protocol because um, he probably feel that Congress has not given him the mandate yet and that uh, the people have not really given him that mandate. My hope is that um, what people saw during uh, Hurricane Sandy may give them some insight as to what is necessary to understand that climate change is a reality, that the United States needs to lead the world. Uh, he did talk very clearly after his uh, election about climate change. I don't think that they will come forward and, and say we are on board, but I think that we will come out with one thing here. This is my, my intuition. I may be very wrong. I think that the um, Gulf countries will come up with some solution to the climate fund uh, so that it will not be a complete failure, but that we will be able to uh, bridge that gap with respect to the money that has been promised. Perhaps the United States will be willing to be generous with, relation, with respect to that. So let's hope that that will be something that will be accomplished. But we need a lot more. We need, we need leaders, world leaders, to really realize that this is a very important opportunity that they have a responsibility and that climate change is a threat and that this is maybe the most serious threat that we are facing in the world today.